Welcome back to Home Improvement Woodworking. I'm working on remodeling this bedroom and so far on this project I replaced the sliding doors by framing in the opening and installing doors on hinges. I've also built in this organizer to make the most use of the closet space. Our upcoming plans include building in some cabinets and a window seat. Today what I'm going to do is put the casing on the door frame of the closet. I've got a unique design that I'm using for the trim that I've used in other areas of the house. I'm going to show you how to build the header in place in this particular situation, but in a future episode, I'll show you how to replace door trim and pre-build it and install it here. Stay tuned, I'll show you how it's done. Our videos show you how to add value and character to your home. This is the centerpiece of the room, so it really needs to visually work. Learn how to get quality results that you'll be proud of. Welcome to Home Improvement Woodworking. The inspiration for the design of this trim work in my home came from Robert's Illustrated Millwork Catalog. This is a catalog that was produced in 1903. You can see some of the details here that I used to design my trim work. There are a few more books that I've referred to over the years. This one is Trim Carpentry and Built-ins by Taunton Press. And this one is Decorating with Architectural Trim Work. I'll leave a link in the video description to all these books so you can reference them. Let's start off by taking some measurements. The most accurate way to make your cuts is to hold something in place and mark it. But what I need to do, first of all, is get the material down to manageable size. So I'm going to measure it and cut it about an inch long. And just a tip for you, if you carry your phone with you, just take a photo of the measurement and you don't need to write it down. So I have a measurement of the height and the width of the door here, and that's good enough to get the material ready. Now let me show you what this design is all about. So starting at the bottom here, I'm going to put on casing, and this is a Victorian casing. This is something that's common at hardware stores. And in order for that to look right, I put a plinth block underneath and a plinth block is something that's usually a little bit deeper than the trim the casing itself and this is where the baseboard comes in and gets tied in so these are the components at the bottom of the door we've got the casing and the plinth block and at the top we've got a header which is called a cap this is made up of several different pieces one is a half round so a quarter round would be a quarter of that this is a half round it's three quarter inch and then the other is a small crown. So this is a small crown here. And that goes on top. So I've got a pine board that goes in here. This gets mounted on the bottom. This gets mounted on the top. And that's what makes up the cap. So we've got three pieces here, two pieces here. So five in total, making up this door casing. Let's head to the workshop and start prepping some material. Here at my miter saw, I'm going to cut the top cap first. This is a one by six, which means it's three quarter inches thick and five and a half inches tall. That's exactly what I need for this. So I don't need to rip this down. I just need to cut it to length. On the photo I took, it's about 55 and a half where the casing start and I've got three inch casing. Add an extra inch to that and I've got my measurement. Now here if I cut it at 81 I've got lots of length but I've got a plinth block at the bottom so if I set this at the 81 line then I just mark it here that gives me the length for the casing. For the plinth block these aren't that easy to find. You might have to go to a specialty supplier for these. What I do is I buy 5 quarter inch pine. I'll plane it down to 1 inch thick. And then what I'll do is rip it three inches wide so it's the same as my casing. So I've got this the right width and the right thickness now for the plinth blocks. But what I need to do is just make sure they're all going to be exactly the same size. So I'm going to step a stop block. And a stop block simply lines up your cut every single time. So I just need to line this up here. Okay, so that's going to give me blocks the same size. And then when you plane a board, there's always something called snipe. There's a bit of a hump here. You get that at the start of the board and the end of the board. So I want to cut that off first, and then I can cut all the plinth blocks.
You can see how quickly I can cut these with a stop block in place. The key safety element is making sure you hold the piece down between the stop block and the blade to make sure there won't be any kickback. Now I've made some extras here because I have a few more rooms in the house I need to work on, but what I'm going to do now is round over the front edges and the top edges. I'm going to put a coat of primer on these because working next to carpet that's difficult to do. It's just much easier to do it here in the workshop. And then we'll go back up to the bedroom and we'll install the plinth blocks and measure the trim. The primer on the plinth blocks is now dried, and this is where we're going to start installing. We'll put the plinth block in first and then stay on the casing on top, and that way we can take an accurate measurement of where they need to be trimmed and get ready for the cap to go on. We'll start on the left side of the closet where I designed this that the trim is going to fit precisely between the wall and where the reveal on the casing needs to be. But there's a bit of a problem at the bottom we need to deal with first. At the top hinge, you can see here how the casing fits in well. This is where the plinth block goes. And you can see if I try to slide this trim in here, it's not going to fit. I know that the door is plumb, so this drywall is coming out closer to the hinge uh, on this side. So I need to trim off the outside of this casing. And once I've trimmed that, then I need to trim the plinth block to match as well. I'll use the top hinge area here to lay out my measurement. What I want to do is use a combination square and line it up to the jam. And then I can lock this and that gives me the measurement I'm going to use at the bottom. I have a problem right here, but it flares out to the top here. So what I'm going to do is mark in several locations where I need this measurement to be. Then I'll trim the casing with my hand plane to fit it to the line. I've determined it's from here down that needs to be trimmed. So I'll just put the casing here, transfer that mark, and work it down with the plane. This is where my line is here. So I need to taper this from nothing here down to something more significant here. And I'm just going to use my hand plane and start down at the bottom. So I need to take off more here. So what I'm going to do is progressively work my way back. And as I'm working my, my way back, this is essentially creating a wedge shape. So this is where I've taken it down and I beveled it more towards the back so the front is going to be a tight fit. We'll see how this goes in. It fits but it's really tight and if you've got pressure put on that hinge you're going to end up with problems. So I need to take it down a little bit more down here at the bottom and it looks like we'll be good to go. Sit it in place and see how it looks. Okay, that's good. Well, I was a little too aggressive there in the corner, but we'll have to cock that. So now what I can do is trim this plinth block. I think I'll just take it down to the table saw and zip, just zip off that edge right over there. Now the trick to doing that, let me just lift this back up. I can easily measure it turn it upside down, take my pencil, mark it there, and that's the edge that I want to take off. So with the block trim, put it in place. Now one thing I did notice is this 2x4 here is sitting back a little bit from the door jam. So what it's causing the trim to do is roll back and creating a gap here instead of being like that. So I've got a quick fix for that. but. Let's just double check the fit here. Okay, good. Nice fit. So let me put a spacer behind the trim here, and then we can put the plinth block in. This is just a thin piece of cherry that I've got left over from the workshop, but it'll give me exactly what I need to make sure that that's square. And I'm just putting it on with CA glue because it works nice and quick. Another tip for you, when you're renovating, clean up your mess as you go. That way there's less chance of it spreading out and making an even bigger mess. It's time to pull out the nail guns. And this is a brad nailer. And I also got a finish nailer. The difference between the two, you can see the size difference. But this one shoots up to an inch and a quarter. 
This one is up to two inches. So I'm gonna use the finish nailer on the plinth blocks because I need an inch to get through the plinth block and then that gives me an inch to get into the framing and into the door jam. So I can put this plinth block in place, but I don't wanna nail it on right now. What I wanna do is put the trim on just to make sure I've got everything lined up properly. This is the critical edge here that needs to be lined up. So that's looking good right there. Now, if you're nailing these by hand, what I'd recommend is pre-drill a hole and then put your finishing nail through it. It just saves a lot of banging around and it's a lot less work for you. When you're using a nail gun, please remember to wear safety glasses. There's a lot of pressure coming out of these, so it's important to keep yourself safe. I'm gonna measure the reveal on the top here the same as we did on the side using this measurement, so then we'll know how long to cut the casing. I've gone through the same process on this side, so we can now take the casing into the workshop and cut it to final length. The casing's ready to go, but I need to add more spacers to this side so that trim stays square to the front edge. If I light the lower portion of the door and put my ruler against here, you can see that gap that's there. This is the door jam. This is where the trim gets nailed on. But back here, I need to put in a small spacer block to take up that space. For trim carpentry and attaching something like this, I prefer CA glues because it's just a matter of spraying on the activator. And then Putting on some of the CA glue. And five to 10 seconds, you've got a permanent bond. Now we can switch over from the finished nailer to the brad nailer, and we can put on the casing. Now, we're almost ready to put the cap on, but in the corner over here, drywall is always rounded in the corner. It's never square. So what I've done here is I've cut a five degree back bevel on it, and that's this way. So that way, the part that's sticking out the most is the front edge. And when I put it up here, I get a nice tight fit. I can now mark the cap for length. I sanded the cap in the workshop so it's all ready to go. Set this on top here and put in the finishing nails. With the cap secured, I can now measure for the half round at the bottom here. The way I mark this is, mark a line here where I want it cut and then I put an angle this way and that just reminds me what angle to cut it. And I'll measure the small crown at the same time so I can cut them both at once. Cutting these miters is easy on a quality miter saw. You just have to move it over to the 45 degree mark and you're ready to go. Now if you notice back here, I've got a dust collection hood. I've got a dust collector sucking dust in here. So I just slide these back and forth according to what I need. So that gives me enough clearance here that I can get my saw in, but there's still enough suction to be able to pull the dust. These are notoriously dusty machines, so that's why a dust hood's so important. I've got plans for this on my website if you want to check them out. So I'll cut this one first. This is the easy one. So I've got my mark here and I'm going to cut it on a 45 degree that way. And what I'll do is start the cut long and then just progressively move closer to that line so I get a really accurate cut. 
On a crown like this, it's at the same angle here. I'm cutting it on a 45 degree angle. But on a crown, it's not 90 degrees at the back. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If I push this down firm here, it comes to the top of the fence here. But if I roll it back so it's tight against that fence, it's sticking up a little bit here. So what I have to do is split the difference between the two. This is a small crown, so it doesn't need to be that accurate. So I'm just going to eyeball where that should be to give me an idea of where I should cut that 45. Well, I'm still at the miter saw. What I'm going to do is cut the returns, and that's the small piece that goes on the end of the cap. And what I'm going to do is measure, and your measuring tape uh, is difficult to use at the end here because it does move. So for accurate measurements, I like to go to the 10 line, and then from there, I can measure out the 3 quarter inches that I need. Next I'll cut the return on the crown mold. I forgot to mention before that when you cut crown molding, because you're cutting on an angle like this, you actually need to cut it upside down. So this is the way I cut the previous piece. So I'll turn it right, back, right side up again. So what I need to do is I've got a nice clean cut here. So this will be against the drywall. I need to measure three quarters of an inch from here. And then I need to cut it this way. So I'll turn this around. Now what I need to do is adjust the saw. So open this up, flip this around, move this in. And again, what I'm going to do is line this up halfway between those two wobbling points, about there. And then what I'll do is I'll sneak up on that cut to get it precisely at that line. Now we can test these pieces and make sure they fit right. Now to make things easier when you're building things in place, clamps really help. So if I put this clamp here, it allows me to take the half round and put it in here. And I can put a second one over here. Now my hands are free. And now I can check for alignment. If I put this end piece in first, you can see that there's a gap at the front. If I put that down, you see there's a gap at the side. The piece that's long is the little one, and there's no way to safely cut a piece that small, so I'll have to cut another one just a little bit smaller. We'll test the new piece and see how it fits. Yep, yeah, looks good. To attach the half round, I'm going to use carpenter's glue and brad nails, but at the end where there's such a small piece, it's dangerous to nail that because you could split it. So I'm going to be using CA glue, and that makes sure I've got a nice tight miter on the corner there. I'll do that first, and then attach the rest. I'll spray the accelerant on this side first. And then add the CA glue to this part. So I'm just gluing the miter, I'm not actually gluing it onto the cap. And then you've only got a few seconds to line it up and hold it still. Now I've got a nice tight miter and I can put this in place. So the small crown, I need to put a layout line. So I've got one here. I've just used a board the right dimension to give me a consistent line all the way across. So that's what I'm installing it to. Now it's a little more difficult to hold this piece up here because I can't clamp it. But I know I've got a square corner on that end and that end. So what I'm going to do is use the half round to my advantage, hold this in place while I check the miter joint here. 
and it looks like I've got the same problem as last time. I've got a good length here, but the small block is too large, so I'll have to remake that in the shop. Yep, that looks good. So I'll glue this with a CA glue. It's a little trickier. Now with my hands full. Let's see if that'll stay up there. The installation of the small crown is going to be trickier because I only have one hand to work with and that's why I recommend building these ahead of time. The reason that I built this in place is because I wanted a really nice tight joint here. If I'm working on a doorway like this, and I'll show you that in the next video, you can pre-build them in a workshop environment and then just install the whole thing. So here we go. I love the detail in this cap, and you can see here, tight miters are a key part of that. Using a CA glue is really important to make those, and Starbond's offering a 10% discount. There's a discount code in the video description below that you can use. I've got some nail holes to fill here first, and then what we'll do is put some primer on, and we'll see how this is turning out. Now putting the wood filler in here is pretty easy. I just use my finger, but the challenge here is not to push it in too deep. That you're going to leave a depression. You need to leave it raised a little bit so you can sand it down smooth. So I just take a little bit of my finger and work it into the hole like that. If you leave too much here, you're going to have a lot of sanding to do. To sand the filler down, I use a 120 grit sandpaper. And to go over the corners here to make sure I've got a perfect miter, what I do is I use a 220 that's smoother, less aggressive. So it'll just be enough to make sure I've got a nice point on all these areas here. The other part that needs sanding is just under the half round here. What I want to do is make sure I've got a smooth transition and you're not going to notice that these are two separate parts. Everything's sanded now and cleaned off, so we're now ready for primer. And a tip for you, if you buy a quality brush, it can last you for years. I've been using this one literally for 20 years, painting homes that I've lived in. And the key to it is making sure that you clean it out properly. As well, before you paint, get it wet. That way there's less chance for the paint to dry on the brush and it's easier to clean out. Well, that gives you an idea of what this door casing is going to look like once the paint goes on. I still have to sand it and put on those coats of paint, but before I do that, I'm going to work on this door here where I'm upgrading the door casing. 
what I'm going to do is pre-build that header in the workshop and you'll see how much easier it is to work in that controlled environment. I can get all the dust and everything controlled in the workshop, have it primed and bring it here and install it. It's also a pre-hung door so when I take the casing off the door is going to want to move around. So there's a few tips and tricks I'll share with you as I do that. If you haven't subscribed to our channel you can click over here and click on the bell icon and you'll get notified every time we publish a video. Until next time, enjoy your time in the workshop. Thank you.